Hi and welcome to High School Physics Explained and today we're going to be looking at the concept of Newton's three laws using the great animations from the FED team at the University of Colorado, so stay tuned. Now today using the animation from the FET team called Forces and Motion, I'm going to be examining Newton's three laws in reverse order. So I'm going to start with the third, then the second, and the first. So that all makes sense as we go along because often confusion arises when students get to know one and two and then sort of get confused at three. So let me explain. So let's start with Newton's third law. You can see here I have a lovely picture of a man pushing onto a box. Now that box is going to be on the surface here and there's some friction involved. So you see there are two forces here and these are the applied forces and I make this stress point on the box. So the red one is the force or friction going in the opposite direction and the forward direction is the force that the man is applying on the box. Now Newton's third law says this, if A applies a force on B, then B applies an equal but opposite force on A. And strictly speaking, this is always true. Now let's explain that a bit further. So I'm going to use a series of arrows, again that are going to be the same color, but also I'm going to add a few extra arrows. So the first arrow I'm going to have is this arrow here, which is our applied force, which I'm going to place actually at the point of contact. So here is the applied force. Now that applied force is the force of the man on the box. Now we also have another force here, which is the same size but in the opposite direction, which is the force that the box is applying back onto the man. So you know that if you push something, it pushes back on you. And the harder you push, the harder you feel that pressure on your hand. It's pushing back on you. Then of course we have this force here, which is the force of friction on the box, which is really the force of the ground on the box. So I'm gonna put that on the ground like so. Similarly speaking, we have an equal and opposite force in the opposite direction. Now this is the force of the box onto the ground. Right? Now what happens now if I were to increase the force that the guy is pushing? So what's happening is this force has increased. As a result, this has increased. But what's also happening is, is that this force has increased and this force has increased. The reality is, is that if this force increases on the box, the box pushes back harder. Now, these two are always equal, but remember it's this force and this force that are acting on the box. The other forces are not acting on the box. One's acting on the man and one's acting on the ground. There comes a point in time when the box will start to accelerate because we start to get an uneven force. So here it is, and this is an acceleration. And I'm going just to pause the animation for a moment. Now you'll see that the force of the applied force is larger than the force of friction. But this force increases now as well because the force of A on B equals the force of B on A. These two are equal, but the object accelerates because of this force and this force being unequal because they're the forces acting on the block. So that is the introduction to Newton's third law, but as you can see, I'm now having a segue into Newton's second law, which is really just examining the forces on the object that is accelerating. So now what we'll do is we'll get rid of the forces not acting on the box, because now Newton's second law is all about the forces acting on the box. So we'll get rid of this force, and we'll get rid of this force because they're not acting on the box. And now you can see I have these two forces and of course this mirrors what's in our diagram and the object is starting to accelerate. So let's examine that a little bit more closely. And this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a few things to our little animation. We're gonna show the sum of the forces, which is often referred to as the net force. We're also gonna show the acceleration because that's what's happening to the blocks. We're getting some acceleration going on. And then we'll also add our values. And that's important because I'm going to show you that there is actually a relationship in this situation here. 
So first of all, understand that Newton's second law is not about forces themselves, it's about the sum total of the forces. So in this case, we have a net force. We have 250 in the forward direction, 154 in the reverse direction. The net is 96 Newtons. In other words, there is an unequalness between the forces that are applied. 96 Newtons, and in this case, the animation says, well, it's gonna travel at 1.92 meters per second. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that for the moment because we're gonna use that to establish our relationship. So we're gonna have our force over here and we're gonna have our acceleration here. And in this case, we have a sum total of 96 Newtons, I'll leave the units off for the moment, and a value of 1.92 over here. So in that case, is that's what the acceleration is. Now let's apply a greater force. So we're gonna increase the applied force to 2,300, right? So now it's going to accelerate at a greater rate. Notice now that the net force is bigger. We now have 146, and we have now the acceleration of 2.92. If we now again cause an acceleration to increase by applying a greater net force. So now let's increase this to 350. The frictional force is still 154. So now the uh, sum total or net force that we have is 196. And now the acceleration, well, let's see what that acceleration is when we place the animation and we can get 3.92. So 3.92 is going on. Can you predict what will happen if I increase this net force by adding another 50 newtons here. Well, it's gonna be pretty clear. We're gonna guess this is going to be 246. Mm, the pattern suggests this is gonna be 4.92. Again, like good scientists, let's test this with some evidence here. So now we press this play and we gotta make sure that we've applied the, um, there we go. Let's apply the force and hey presto, we get 4.92. Now can you see there's a relationship here going on? This section here in terms of the forces is an increasing by 50 Newtons because we're doing that by the applied force and the friction doesn't change. So we're getting an increase of 50 Newtons every step. Here we're getting an increase of one meters per second every step, one meter per second squared. So that means if we were to graph this, that's a force and our acceleration, we'd get a lovely straight line whose slope is equal to, in this case, 50 over one, which is equal to 50. Now, why is that significant? Well, that's significant because that's, that just happens to be the mass of the box. If I were to increase the mass of the box, like so, make it significantly heavier, heavier, then I'm going to get a graphical situation here where my graph, and you can do this yourself, is where if I were to graph that force, I would get a slope that for the acceleration that is steeper. And that makes sense. I increase the forces, but the rate of acceleration is not going to be as much. I'm having to push harder. And so again, the slope ends up being equal to the mass of the object. Now, if you see this, we now have a relationship. We see that the relationship is that if I have F over A, I get M. And of course, if I rearrange that, I get the force is equal to MA. And that's how often many times people remember the second law, F equals MA. The critical point here, we have force being the net force and the mass and the acceleration being inversely proportional to each other. So that's the second law in play. But now let's clear our desk and look at the first law. Now, how are we gonna apply the first law? Well, the probably a better thing to do is to use a different animation. We're gonna come back to this animation in a moment. And I'm gonna use this animation right here. And I've got a very simple a tug of war going on. And I have a force of this person attached here and a person like here. Now what's gonna happen here, you can see this is going to accelerate. Now, why? Because we have a net force. The force going to the left is greater than the force going on to the right. They're acting on the cart. And of course, it's going to accelerate. Now I'm gonna pause this for a moment. Now let's say this tug of war is going on and someone now wants to apply another force here to slow these things. So they add this to the situation while it's moving, mind you, I've just paused the animation. Notice here that the two forces are equal now. What's gonna happen? No, it's not gonna stop. It's gonna continue doing what it's doing. That is, it's going to continue going at a constant velocity. That means really that if the forces 
in applied cancel out, we say the net force is equal to zero, then the object will continue to move at a constant velocity. Or in other words, there is no acceleration. Now that sort of makes sense, doesn't it? So if I have Newton's second law, which says F is equal to MA, then if Fn ends up being zero, then on this side, my acceleration must be zero. But remember, my acceleration being zero can mean it is stationary, and it can mean, of course, that it's moving at a constant velocity. Both those scenarios from your frame of reference are for net scenarios where there is no acceleration, so where the net force is zero. If we now go to our other animation, let's reinforce that. So here we're going to reset it, but now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the friction. So in this case, we've got no frictional force. And if I have my box sitting over here and I have my man pushing an applied force, he's going to start to cause it to accelerate. But as soon as he stops pushing, there's no net force acting on the block. And so the old block will continue to move at a constant velocity. Now, if I were to apply friction, we now have an opposing force. And so we have second law acting and of course eventually it comes to a stop. And you can explore uh, friction a little bit closer in my video on friction. But if I get my man here and I apply a force onto the uh, block, let's say in such a way that he applies that force that is equal to the frictional force, He's going to apply a force, he's going to start getting it to move, which is the second law, of course, in play. So now we've got some acceleration going on. And now we're going to reduce the applied force so that is equal to the frictional force. And you'll note that these uh, will get this basically sitting roughly at the same speed. So in this case, we have constant velocity. This is Newton's first law. And this, of course, applies also to the concept of inertia which simply says an object resists a change in its acceleration. So if it's traveling at a constant velocity, it will stay traveling at a constant velocity. If it's, stay, if it's stationary, it will stay stationary. It'll only move if it is experiencing an unbalanced net force. So there you have it. That is, in a nutshell, Newton's three laws. Third law, and A, if A applies a force on B, then B applies an equal but upward force back on A. Second law, we're interested only on the forces acting on the object. And if the forces are unbalanced, we get an acceleration that is directly proportional to that unbalanced and indirectly proportional to its mass. And then we have the first law, which is really a nice follow on. If therefore there is no acceleration, there's no net force. Or if there's no net force on the object, it won't accelerate. So there you go. My name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Please press uh, subscribe, hit the bell so that you get my latest updates. I hope that's been helpful for you. Take care. Bye for now.